A young female patient came to my practice requesting that tooth 1-1 be newly restored. The problem was an inadequate filling that did not appear to match in shade and morphology. Both incisors showed different proportions. 1-1 appeared to be much narrower than 2-1. This could also be determined using width measurement of both teeth. To begin with, a mock-up was fabricated. In other words, a composite of the appropriate shade was applied directly to the unetched and untreated tooth surface. In doing so, the shape was formed approximately in accordance with what one would expect as a practitioner. Creating a mock-up also allows the selection of the subsequent shade to be verified. In this case, I used A3, which, as it turned out, was already a good match. An impression was then taken of the mock-up using silicone. This impression was used as a kind of key during subsequent modeling of the final restoration, defining the size and shape of the palatal tooth wall, as well as making layering easier. A variety of shades with varying translucencies were applied, enabling individual shade selection so that the effect of the shade in each case could be more effectively evaluated. Once curing was complete, I chose OMC, as well as the shades A2 and CO, or clear opal. I removed the mock-up, the shade samples, as well as the original filling entirely. I beveled the cavity margins using an oscillating diamond tool with varying grain sizes. This allowed me to achieve a chamfer with a nice, even gradient. The interdental area was also roughened, using a strip that was diamond-plated on one side. I placed the silicon key on the tooth in order to verify that it was seated correctly without any gaps. The gingiva was withdrawn using a retraction cord, and the adjacent tooth protected using Teflon tape. The preparation was etched for 30 seconds using I-Bond etch. After this, the etching gel was removed and the cavity rinsed thoroughly using water. The cavity was dried and I applied the etch and rinse bonding system I-Bond total etch to the entire cavity. Air was then blown onto the adhesive in a fanning movement until a nice homogeneous glossy surface was achieved. As the original filling was not sufficiently contoured in the palatal area, this area had to be cut clear on the silicone key. I then applied Venus Diamond Flow in shade OM to the distal area of the silicone key. Together with the silicone key, the material was pressed against the palatal wall of the tooth and then adapted to the marginal structures of the tooth using the probe. I then used the tip of the probe to remove excess material in the incisal area and cured the material. Using the mirror, I verified that the material had adapted fully to the tooth surfaces. Once the palatal wall had been modeled, I layered the dentine core using Venus Diamond OMC, which is an opaque shade. I used this shade in a fine layer up to the incisal third and filled the space between the mamelons using Venus Diamond Flow in shade CL, or clear, in order to create a translucent area. This area then had a gray appearance that distinguished it clearly from the highly chromatic mamelon structures. Once curing had been completed, I then applied a layer of Venus Diamond A2 on the entire incisal area. This created the impression of a lighter color, and the shade had a considerably more harmonious appearance. A final layer of CO, or clear opal, was applied. The shade clear opal created a white, opalescent effect, helping to make the restoration appear very natural. After the final layer of CO had been applied, I now measured the width of the tooth and verified the proportions. Finishing was performed using an oscillating diamond tool with a thin blade that is diamond plated on one side. The proximal area was then finished, as well as the distal contour. Venus Supra, the pink pre-polisher, was then used to level out and pre-polish the surface evenly. 
The high gloss finish was achieved using the Gray Venus Supra high gloss polisher. In each case, low pressure and lots of water were used in order to obtain a nice, even, glossy surface. Finally, I removed the retraction cord and tested the static and dynamic occlusion, the protrusion, as well as the lateral trusive pathways in the incisal area. A comparison showing the final restoration, I was able to achieve ideal proportions by partially layering over toothed 1-2. Venus Diamond has also been successfully adapted to the natural tooth substance in terms of shade. There is no visible shade transition area. The incisal edge also looks very natural. The patient was very happy and delighted with the result.